Hi everyone, Elise from The Painted Brushing Co. Now, I'll start off by apologizing. I don't have my tripod with me, but I really want to get into Pure Eco's Eco Stripper and have a go with it. So this video is the very first time I'm using it. Um, I have done nothing other than open the can and just give it a smell so I could let a customer know how strong the smell was. Um, I've never used it. It's about nine months old. It came out about nine months ago, back at the start of the year. So this is my very first time using it. So I wanted to do a video. I just don't have my tripod. So it's gonna be a one-handed affair. Okay, so this is the piece, this is the door. I have got a set of bedside tables. They are a veneer, but they've got this really, really nice timber grain. Um, so I've got two doors and two drawers to do the actual frame of the bedside tables I'm going to be painting because the veneer is really really damaged but I want to strip these now because they're a veneer yes you can sand them there's it, it's a lot of extra work um simply because you have to go really slowly to make sure you don't break through the veneer and this veneer seems to be really thin so I just don't want to risk it so um I've pulled off the original handle which of course just my luck was one of these which is fine i'll just get a bigger handle with a back plate on it um, i've taken it off the cabinet just to make stripping easier and i'll bring you down so this is what we're working with really really oh really slim veneer uh, i've just taken the catch off the back as well so i could lie it flat but you can see the veneer there this is over a rather <laughs> cheap bit of plywood that's and that's the plies there that you can see so um and here's some of the damage so all of that has to be filled and uh that's the inside of the door all of that has to be filled um so i am and the actual body of the bedsides are quite damaged as well so we're going to be applying the stripper to the front of the doors and to the drawers as well. But in this video, I'm just gonna show you the one door. This is my very first time using it, my first impressions. Um, so let's get into it. Okay, so let's just have a quick look at the tin. As always, read instructions first. Um, this is their Eco Paint Stripper. It's biodegradable citrus scent water cleanup, which is fantastic for a stripper. Um, a lot of them, you need chemicals to clean them up, which I'm just not really into. This is why I normally sand instead of using a stripper. Um, it's Australian made and owned, like all of Pure Eco's products. Some basic safety there, making sure that your eyes are covered, your skin's covered, uh, wear gloves, etc. Making sure that you're in a well-ventilated area. I've actually managed to open my back window, which I didn't know I could open. Um, and I've got a fan on as well. So we're nice and ventilated. Uh, it's not an overly strong smelling product, but obviously... You don't want to be overcome with fumes. Not that there really is any, but just keep that in mind. Nice, basic, simple instructions. So I'm going to give it a stir and then we're going to pop it on with a brush today. Um, and then let's see what happens. So leave it for 20 minutes, which is perfect. Um, I'm using an old plastic bag. I've just torn it up. I think Glad Wrap or something like that would be fine. I don't have any here, so I'm using what I've got on hand. Um, I've got some gloves as well. I'm just going to use one of these brushes. You can use whatever you like. Um, I haven't tried this stripper yet for actually cleaning brushes, but I think it might be a good option. So we'll see if it gets some of that paint out of the bristles as well. So let's open our tin and give it a stir. So I've just cracked the lid. Let's have a look. Oh, it's very bright. So bright yellow. It smells very citrusy, like a lot of lemon, but it's not overpowering at all. Um, I'm quite sensitive to smells, but I don't think this one's going to be an issue. It's quite a nice, thick consistency. Now, this is a brand new jar, so it doesn't really shake that well. So we're just going to give it a quick stir. I like the consistency. Really like the consistency, actually. All right, so let's grab our brush and pop it straight on to our board. So one-handed, I apologize. Oh, it just feels, it feels a bit different to paint, but it's nice. I like the thickness, so a good even layer. I do tend to apply my paint strippers a little bit thicker. Um, I find they work a bit better when they're a bit thicker, but let's just see 
let's sort of just try and have a play around here. Let's get it on to begin with and just see. It's a very pleasant scent, I will say. I quite like it. It's not strong, it's not overpowering. Oh, I can feel it's already working. Can you see how it's scrubbing? Look at that, it's already working. So all this blistering there, that's fantastic. So 20 minutes it reckons, but honestly, I don't think this is even gonna take 20 minutes. I'm just gonna put it on that little bit thicker just to see if we get a bit of a difference with it being thicker versus it is working really, really fast and it's becoming very hard to maneuver. So down here, I've got it a little bit thinner Whereas up here it's a bit thicker and you can see it's really working that little bit faster. So we are going to pop another slightly thicker coat down the bottom. And we're gonna cover it. We're gonna do this fairly quickly. And we're gonna cover it so it doesn't dry out. So the key is not to let it dry out. So we will take our plastic. Um, I haven't put gloves on yet. I will put them on when we start to scrape because that's generally when I start to get product on my hands. So I'm sort of just going to smooth that out. Let's bring... I don't really have enough bags, but we'll do the best that we can with what we've got. All right. So that's done. Um, I'm actually going to let my brush sit in this for a few minutes. Let's see if it can take the paint out of the brush as well. Um, so I'm gonna come back in 15, 20 minutes and let's see whether or not it's worked well for us. Okay, so we're just shy of 20 minutes. We're sitting on about 18 minutes. Um, I chucked my brush in here as well, just to see, but you can already see the stain like attached to the plastic, which is always cool to see. So let's just have a little look at our brush first I have put my gloves on so it looks like it's picked that up really really well so we're gonna do this first but then I'll go and rinse this out and we'll have a look later and see how it's looking so we're just gonna peel our plastic off now I'm just doing the one door at the moment just to see how we go um, but later on if I was doing more pieces I just reuse this plastic but I can probably reuse it anyway just sort of going to sit that over there trying to it's really hard when you're doing something like this to contain the mess but we'll see how it goes so that's looking really really good it's still wet it's really cold out here um so it's let's see it's still wet oh no it's wetter than what it looks cool So down the bottom here, we applied it fairly thinly. Normally I would use a metal scraper as well, but I don't have one here with me. And I just wanted to sort of have a go and see how it went. Um, I would definitely bring my metal scraper in for all the rest. So the bottom was quite thin. Let's start up here where it was that little bit thicker. See how it goes. Now, if it's not peeling like this either, I would definitely give it that little bit longer and just see how it goes. Now, I did have a feeling that the original timber was gonna be quite, well, the veneer was actually gonna be quite a dark color, but we'll see how scraping goes. See if a lighter color does come through. I'm hoping it does, but you never know. certainly looks really good it's definitely taking some of that varnish off down here you can see it's actually come down it's started taking off that next layer as well 
um, a lot of times pieces like this have like a varnish on top or um, sometimes a wax or a shellac as well. So sometimes you first need to get those off first before the actual stain of the piece starts to come out. All right, let me clean this little bit up and we'll see what we're looking at. Okay, so here's where we're at after that first coat. We're looking pretty good. I've just scraped it off that little bit more. Um, I've actually found a um, palette knife. I don't know what they're called. Um, but I found that and I used that and it did definitely, it was better than the plastic. So I definitely recommend a metal one um, for all of the rest of this these two side tables. I'll definitely be using metal. But for now, let's try a second coat. So you can see it's done a really, really good job, but there's definitely another layer there that's starting to come out. So let's pop one more coat on. Uh, we're gonna go a little bit thicker. The thicker definitely work better. So let's go a little bit thicker and just see how this goes. So I've just grabbed a new brush just because that other brush there is um, currently occupied. So we're just gonna pop this on here. The thicker, it definitely worked better where it was thicker. So we're just gonna put it on and making sure that I get the edges as well. I always miss somewhere when I do this. So I think you can be generous with it. And then we're gonna give it another 20 minutes. I definitely wouldn't give it longer than 20 minutes. Um, I think any longer and um, we would be it would just be drying out too much. It definitely dries. Um, and then you've got to try and clean that up. So stick to the 20. But we're just going to pop this on nice and thick again. I, it's sort of hard to tell, but you don't want it too thick, don't want it too thin. But I reckon about this is where we're at. So it's, it's like, it's a thick coat but I think that will be better than the thinner one that we did earlier. So I'm just gonna spread it out a little bit, try and keep it fairly even if we can, but again, you can already see in some parts that it is starting to lift stuff. So it will work fairly quickly. Um, I've just found another bit of plastic just because that last one's no good, and I'm just going to lay this down. Oop over it as well all right let's leave it there try and seal that in best we can i did notice those bits that weren't quite the sealed in as well didn't quite do as well so to make sure it's nice and done and let it do its thing for another 20 minutes or so okay so our 20 minutes are up uh so let's have a look and see what it's done this time so peel back our plastic oh it looks good it looks really good beautiful oh, stuck all right so let's uh let's skip the plastic <laughs> scraper i'm not ideal at all but It'll do the job. So, um, let's see. Cool. So I think this might just be a dark timber. I was hoping it was light, but dark is fine. That's coming off a lot better with the uh, metal. I just, it feels like it's flowing that little bit better. There's definitely a little bit of product still coming off with the stripper, but there's not, it's not a lot, which is fine. Um, I half expected that. And that's not the product's fault at all. Um, it's the actual timber. So I think it's just, I don't think it's stained at this point, is what I'm trying to say. I think it's just a nice dark red timber, which is absolutely fine. Not what I was hoping for. I was definitely hoping for a nice light timber on this piece, just because I'm planning on doing the frame in a black um, and I wanted that bit of contrast, but I think the red will be really pretty as well. 
So you can see there's very little product coming off this time as well, but that's fine. See, that looks really, really clean. That looks really good. So what we're gonna do, let's give it a little clean and see how it looks once it's dry. So that's all it came off this time, not a lot, but it does look really, really nice. It is a beautiful timber, I will say that. And I think you can sort of see it at the moment, but it's got this stunning grain, but it's really got a bit of shine coming through. So I think that's really pretty. So for cleanup, just let me check our tin. We are, what are we doing? Soapy sponge or scotch pad to remove all the residue. So let me get a bucket of uh, some warm soapy water and let's give it a clean. Okay, so I've grabbed a bucket, just some warm water straight out of the tap. Um, and I've just waxed and dish soap in there. That's all I've got. But the Puri Co Lemon Myrtle Cleaner would be ideal for this. Um, but I'm just using what I've already got open. So I'm just trying to get our um, bubbles flowing a little bit and mix it up. And I'm just using a scourer. This one's been pretty well used, but it's still going to do its job. But just to make sure that I don't scratch the um, timber green, I'm just going to go in the direction of the green as much as possible. And we're just going to clean it down. And I'll make sure that I get those edges as well. So it's a, this step is really, really important anytime you're using a stripper. You need to be making sure that you remove any residue because that residue is going to impact on your finish. Now I'm just looking at this. It almost looks like it's starting to crack a little bit, which is very normal for the veneer, but I think that will be okay. Hopefully it just needs a bit of hydration happening with it, but it looks okay. So I'm just really cleaning it and then we'll let it dry. I'm just gonna make sure that I wipe down those edges as well. That looks really good. So you can really see in that water there how much stuff it's taken off. It really needs that clean. All right, so I'm just gonna go over this a couple times and then we'll come back and have a look at it once it's dry, but it looks really, really good. Okay, so we're all dry. Just thought I'd quickly show you what we're looking like. So it looks really, really good. You can definitely see that difference. I might just put a little comparison here of before we remove the varnish and now. Uh, the timber is stunning. So I'm really, really excited about this piece. And I thought I'd just show you the water as well now that we have finished. You can see how dirty that is. So that's just all the leftover stain and glaze. Uh, sorry, not stain and glaze. All the leftover paint stripper, um, along with uh, any varnish that was still uh, remaining, that's all come off. So that's our water. So it's pretty gross. And that's why we always make sure we clean our pieces, particularly after using the uh, paint stripper. So this is Pure Eco's Eco Paint Stripper. Um, first impressions, I absolutely love it. I think that's a really good result. Um, of course, stripping something and then discovering like a really light timber underneath and having like a really big difference is amazing. Um, but I'm very, very impressed. It worked exactly as described. It worked very, very quickly, under 20 minutes both times, and it was ready to um, go. I also find, personally, it's not as messy. Like these are still gross, but I don't find the residue that comes off as messy as what it can be with some paint strippers either. So I'm very, very impressed. The smell is very minimal. It just smells like I've been cleaning with a citrus-based product. It's really not chemical at all. Um, it's quite pleasant, actually. It's not overwhelming. I don't have a headache from it, which I normally get from paint strippers. So I'm very, very impressed. So that's my first impressions. If you give it a go, give it a go. Let us know in the comments. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe and I will see you in the next one.